gives us our joy. This world can't take it away from us because our God gives it to us. Well, maybe you can tell it by the smile on my face. I've got joy. I've got joy. It's a smile that comes from heaven that this world cannot erase. I've got joy. I've got joy. When I rise in the morning, see the day God has made. Sunshine and storm, and you'll still hear me say, I've got joy. I've got joy. Yes, I've got joy. With trouble all around. This trouble cannot stop me. I am gonna win this race. I've got joy. I've got joy. He strengthens my spirit, provided in prayer. I can't help but shout it and say it again. I've got joy. I've got joy. Yes, I've got joy. This joy is not dependent on what I fall or see. No matter what the struggle. This joy for my journey, no man can take away. The joy of the Lord is my strength today. And Jesus is the solid rock, and I'm standing on the day. I've got joy. I've got joy. You're standing on my birthday. I'm going to win this place. I've got joy. I've got joy. When I rise in the morning, see the day God has made. Sunshine and storm, and you'll still hear me say, I've got joy, I've got joy, yes, I've got joy. Well, maybe you can tell it by the smile on my face. I've got joy, I've got joy. The smile that comes from heaven that this world cannot erase. I've got joy, I've got joy. When I rise in the morning, see the day God has made. Sunshine and storm, and you'll still hear me say, I've got joy, I've got joy, yes, I've got joy. With troubles all around me, I can sing amid grace. I've got joy, I've got joy. This trouble cannot stop me, I am going to win this race. I've got joy. I've got joy. He strengthens my spirit, provided in prayer. I can't help but shout it and say it again. I've got joy. I've got joy. Yes, I've got joy. This joy is not dependent on what I feel or see. No matter what the struggle, I still have victory. This joy for my journey, no man can take away. The joy of the Lord is my strength today. And Jesus is the solid rock, and I'm standing on day. I've got joy. I've got joy. He has taken all my burdens and washed my sins away. I've got joy. I've got joy. When I rise in the morning, see the day God has made. Sunshine or storm, and you'll still hear me say, I've got joy. This next one, it, he gives us peace in the middle of everything.
Good evening, church. Let's open up a prayer real quick because I definitely need God's help tonight. But Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to help me tonight, Lord. Deliver this message that you have given me. I have been studying and praying on peace and joy that we all need, especially me. I'll be mainly preaching to me tonight if I'm preaching to anybody. But especially with the things that the world's going on today, the devil tries to bring us down. We need to be built up in you, Lord. I ask you to help me tonight, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. But I mean, I, this pad dad, the other day when I they're out of town or out this week, but anyways, they asked me to speak tonight, and I was like, you know what, that sounds like I'm in a barrel real bad right here, like it's echoing at me, but um, he asked me to speak, and I was like, you know, I'm, I was, I've been praying and studying and trying to work on peace and joy, because a lot of times, I know in my life, the devil, he'll come at you, and that's the number one thing he tries to attack is your peace. If he can attack your peace and joy, you stay mad all the time. If you're focused on the wrong things, he steals your peace and joy. But I got all my stuff typed out in NLT. It helps me read it. But in James chapter 1, verse 19 in the NLT, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. I mean, I know for me, it's an example. I'm talking to me more than I am to anybody. A lot of people practice this in reverse. I have and can be one of them, but I am working on it. I, I truly am working on it. Just like this yesterday, for example, Jonathan, he's not in here Christmas Yesterday, I got up, I had several things happen to me yesterday morning. Of course, when I go to study for this message, peace and joy, the devil, that's what he's going to try to do. I'm like, oh, man, I'm studying for peace and joy. What's he going to bring him? You don't want to say that, but that's what he does. But I was yesterday morning, I got up, took, hooked the tractor up and everything. I had a bush hog down there at the hunting land at the paper mill. 
I start filling my gas, my, uh, my jugs up with diesel fuel, and for some reason, the nozzle was too big. So that thing, I look, I'll just go put my debit card back in the truck. I always do that. I look over there. As soon as I turn around, that gas jug is expanded. It's like, oh, my gosh, it's going to blow up. But I, was, so I went over there. I jerk it out, and as soon as I jerk it out, it sprays me and a gas pump down with diesel fuel. And I'm like, man, I was like, calm down. At least it was the last jug. I was like, don't get mad, because normally I'll get mad and just want to throw that jug out there. <laughs> and, the, and in front of all them people, they would be like, yeah, that guy's speaking tomorrow night at Resurrection Life Church. <laughs> He's really got peace and joy. But that's what I, but the devil, I was, go, I was getting mad. I was like, nope, I didn't, I didn't say anything. A lot of times it's better to be quiet than to say anything at all. And that is, sometimes for me, that's what I need to do is just shut your mouth. Listen to what God has to say because it's slow to speak. And that's what the Bible says, slow to speak. So you need to be slow to speak, especially Jay. But I pulled it back out and I filled and it. Was, of course, it's filled now. It's just overflowing. But I put it back in the truck and I was like, man, I left my trimmer anyways. Well, I started off, I left the trimmer because I had to weed eat some stuff. So I was not too happy about that because I had to drive all the way back home to get it. So I went back home. And I texted Morgan. I was like, hey, can you get me a shirt and bring me some Dawn soap outside? I'm soaked in with diesel fuel. Because I had it there. And on the way, and I, my tire was, well, not to mention my tire was flat on my trailer, first of all. So I pumped that up, not thinking about it the rest of the day. Go through the rest of the day, praying, seeking God, studying on peace and joy, meditating on peace and joy. My day goes fine. I load the tractor up, and I notice the trailer tire is about on the rim. So I was like, at least I can hopefully make it to the gas station about three miles away from here and pump it up. I pump it up, and it has bubbles all in the tire. So I'm like, man, I got a 20-mile drive. It's 7 o'clock. Please, Jesus, make this thing get it home. So I, and Jonathan Christmas, he called me, and of course, he called me. And me and him talking, I was like, man, just be believing God, man. I'm going to make it home. I was like, not just make it home. I got to make it to the shop in the morning time to get this tire fixed. So on top of that, I, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm just sitting on peace and joy. I got the peace of God. Everything's going to be all right. I'm going to make it home. I'll make it to the shop. Long story short, I got to the shop this morning. I had to get two new tires instead of one. But thank God I had the money to fix it. I made it home. It could have been bad. But the whole time, I noticed the whole entire day, the devil was trying to rob my peace and my joy. Because if he could steal my joy, if that tire would have blown out, if I wouldn't trust in God, the tire would have blown out. Things could have been a pain the rest of the day. But I kept studying on peace and joy, praying and listening to God, and I was patient. I know I talked about patience last time. Be patient, patience, patience. But a lot of us practice them in reverse. Quick to get mad, quick to talk. I know a lot of times I'll say, I won't be, I won't be mean to people or anything, but a lot of times I'm like, man, this piece of junk lawnmower and start beating on it, being crazy and all that stuff. But quick to talk, I have to work on that myself. And not good listeners. We need to listen, be listeners. The next verse I have is James chapter 1, verse 20, and this is, all of, the, all of my scripture will be in the NLT. <clears throat> Human anger does not produce the righteousness of God's desires. The Bible says also in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6, 26 and 27 in the NLT, and don't sin by letting anger control you. The anger tries to control, anything that tries to control you is not of God. I mean, the, de any, the demon possession, I need to talk about that kind of stuff. The devil tries to control you. God is always, I, I used it as an example one time. I'm not going to call Tyler up here or anything. I've done it last time. But in, in youth, I'll be like, Jesus, he will stand beside you. He's that still, small voice just whispering to you, come to me, come to me, draw near, draw near. The devil's at you. He's on both sides of you sometimes and all around you a lot of times. It feels like he's screaming at you, do this, do this, everything's not working out. Look at all this stuff. Look, he's trying to take your eyes off of Jesus because you've got a straight and narrow path right here. You've got all these distractions, all these distractions everywhere. If you're not staying on a straight and narrow, it'll cost you, and that's what the devil does because he knows his time's running short. As you can see today, his time's running short, and I tell the youth all the time, you know, every single body, including me, we have a calling. We need to stay on a straight and narrow because every second wasted, every day wasted is another soul that we could have gotten to heaven, but we need to stay focused. In other words, don't stay mad all day. This means, to me right here, this really spoke out to me a lot. This means you can control your anger, and you can stop letting every little thing make you mad. I mean, a lot of, I mean you can stop letting stuff make you mad. And I'm going to go, I don't need to get ahead of myself, because what I'm going to talk about in a minute. It also means if you let your anger grow by thinking on it. I had somebody do something to me a while back. It's been nobody you know of. It's been a while back. They did something, and they said something to me, and I was just sitting there thinking about it. And it kind of made me mad at first, but I just kept thinking on it. If you don't feed something, it won't grow. I mean, for me, example, I like to eat. If you eat, you're going to get big, like me. I got big. Mom and Dad, they fed me. I was a little boy. Now I'm six foot three, 280 pounds. I would, I, if you feed something, it'll grow. It don't matter what it is. But what I'm saying is 
If you meditate on the wrong thing, it'll grow. If you meditate on God's word, it'll grow and build in you. You can either be a strong man spiritually or be weak in the dumps. It all depends on what you have to do. God gave us our own free will. We have to study and show ourselves approved every single day. But you can choose to be a weak Christian your whole life, or you can be a strong man of faith or woman of faith. But it means if you let your anger grow by thinking on it, you are mad because you choose to be. Just like it said, you choose to be. You can be mad for that day, which it says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. That means you don't, need to be, you don't even need to be mad all day long. You need to quick to make it right. I know a lot of times, especially now, I've been working on it even more. I might say something to Miss Morgan in the morning time because I'm dealing with something else, and I'll call her as soon as I get halfway down the road before I even get to my first job. I'll be like, hey, look, I shouldn't have said what I said. Please forgive me. Do, get, make things right as soon as possible. You are feeding your anger and holding on to it. Whatever you feed will grow. If you don't feed it, it will die. It's like a human being, and it's not going to last but so long without food. You can live a long time with, without food, but if you don't have water just for a few days, you ain't going to make it, especially when it's 110 outside. You won't make it long. The Bible commands us not to allow anger to grow in our hearts. It specifically says, don't let the day go by without fixing it. Never let a day go by without fixing it. <clears throat> in Ephesians chapter 20, I mean, chapter 4, verses 29 through 30 in the NLTs. I mean, abusive language, whether you cuss or say you can, you can actually use abusive language like getting like I, like I will get mad at my equipment and call it dumb or something like that, get mad and want to shake it out there. I'm by myself usually, so nobody sees me getting angry with something. If it don't work, I'm like, oh, let's see what's wrong with this thing. And now I have to learn. I had to learn that myself to calm down because getting mad, frustrated, never makes anything better. I've found that out the hard way, so take my advice. <clears throat> Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit, but the way you live, remember, he has identified you as his own, granting, guaranteeing, I'm not granting, that you will be saved on the day of redemption, that you will be saved on the day of redemption, don't, I mean, right there he said, he starts off with don't use foul or abusive language. God tells you throughout the Bible a what to do, what not to do, and how to do it. It's a handbook for everyday life. You how to control yourself. You're supposed to control your thoughts. You're, I mean, you can take captive your thoughts by knowing the word of God. But if you don't build yourself up on God's word, you're not going to know what to do. If you don't study to show yourself approved, you're not going to know what to do. When a test come and you haven't studied, you're more than likely going to fail, right? How many of you have taken a test and passed it? without studying it sometimes. Me, I've, I've done that once or twice because I glanced at it and listened pretty good. But that's because I glanced at it. But you don't always make 100. I never have made 100 by doing that. You might skim by, but you need to study God's word and show yourself approved. I know when I always would study, when we would have LCU class, I would study extremely hard. And there would be times I might not do it exactly right, but usually I'd be close to making 100. But I, I studied and showed myself approved. And that's because it's something I like. And I feel it's something like in regular school, I'd be like, whatever, and I would get pretty bad grades, and then I would get a beating because I was homeschooled. I would get a beating. I didn't get to say, oh, you're just going home. You're just going home today. I'm like, no, the principal's coming home after he gets off work, and you're getting your tail cut, <laughs> losing all your stuff, and give me your truck keys right now. And taking my truck away when I was 16 years old, that was the worst thing you could possibly do. That was pretty rough. I was like, man. And they'd be like, not just one or two days like some kids. No, we're keeping your truck for like two weeks, and you're going to do whatever we say, which I did that anyways. But you had to do what mom and dad said, and that was, you suffer the consequences if you didn't. But thank God for it. I'm glad they did what they did. <clears throat> Morgan said, yes, amen. <laughs> a, lot, <laughs> a lot of, well, I can even say this. For me, you can be a Christian and be mad. I've, I've been, a, even rec not recently, I would say, by what you hear and feed on. A lot of these guys, great, I mean, they're not, some, I'm not shouldn't say, they're good people. They need to get saved. I try to witness to them all the time. But they focus, they're, they're of the world, and they focus on everything in the world, what the president's doing, what's happening, the news. If what you feed on, if you feed on the news, it's nothing but a negative report. It's not like it used to be, oh, the weather's going to be bright and sunny today. It's like, oh, this, all this is going on, this crazy stuff. No, don't feed on it. If you don't, if you don't feed on it, you never give it a place to grow in your life. But they stay mad all the time because of what they are putting in, the news and reports of people being done wrong. If you will cause, it will cause you to get angry. I, I, I can't watch. The reason I don't watch the news is because that's what it does to me. I just get angry. I'm like, man, I can't believe they're doing all this stuff. 
but I don't even focus on it. I never even watch it. I had somebody say, man, you don't know what's going on. Bro, I don't know. If they're, if they're sending a missile today, I'm just going to be on my lawn. Well, oh, man, what's that? A shooting star. I'll be all right because I know I'll be with Jesus. I mean, I know I'll be with Jesus. It's just like Chris said. Chris used that scripture, and I was talking to Miss Jean Herring today. And she, that, I like talking to her. She's, she's a good lady, a good Christian lady. But um, she was telling me she used the exact same scripture Chris used. That might have been why. It just meant a lot to me when she said it. Why would we worry about us when God feeds the birds? Just like he used an example of the birds in the morning time. You hear him. As soon as I get in the truck, I'll be walking to the truck to get, get in to go to work, and you can hear the birds chirping. They don't have to worry about anything. They know what they got. I mean, God's taking care of them. They don't even worry about food, water. It's just there because why? God takes care of them. They don't have a worry in the world, and we shouldn't either. Worrying is a sin, if you believe it or not. The Bible even says it is. It will cause you to be mad about the economy and who's in office. Well, I'm, I am not because, like I said earlier, I don't watch the news. I never have. And probably never will. Now I probably never will watch the news ever because it's, like I said, it's not a good report. If you stay mad about this, you are dis- If you stay mad about this, you are disobeying the Bible. I don't like it either. I mean, I don't like it either. If you disobey the Bible, you shouldn't disobey the Bible. I see it every day when I am buying, like I said, I see everything everybody else says. People say, well, I buy gas today. I'm like, yeah, I bought, I filled a truck up, I filled my lawnmower up, and I filled 20 gallons worth of gas jugs up just to go to work. Before I even go to work, usually it's over 200 something dollars just to go, just for me to go to work. I just, I mean, I don't sit around. I see them little Joe Biden stickers on there. And it's like, I did that. I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm going to rip that thing off because I don't need to see that. I just, I just put it in, but I trust God. I'm a tither and a giver. It's just like Brother Carlos said, if you're a tither and a giver, God's got you. If you're putting seeds in the ground, I, I was talking to somebody, it's not just about money. That's one thing I've learned. It's not just about money. When you tithe and give, you can sow love to somebody. You can sow peace to somebody. When somebody, I know a guy, he, had, he was going through some stuff. One of the guys I worked with, to be honest with you, he was talking about, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. He had several things happen to him. And he, it, was, it was really rough. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't like, man, I'm losing my house or somebody. It's like he's losing his family. Like stuff was happening. A big deal. He was like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm like, man, the God, I mean, my God is a God of peace. And he was like, he's like what do you mean? And I started getting reading. And the Holy Spirit will bring stuff back to you. That's why I say study to show yourself approved because not only does it help you, but you can help others. We're not just here to be like, oh, I'm happy, I'm doing good, and the person underneath the bridge, you're not doing to help them. You need to help people when God tells you, lays it on your heart to help people. I mean, but anyways, I was telling him this stuff. He's like, man, God's really like that. I mean, I'm, I'm working on him. I'm trying to get him to a point to be like, hey, man, the only way it's going to work for you is if you get saved and ask Jesus into your heart, and it'll bring new light to your life. And that's what will happen. But people gripe about not being, I mean, I've, I've seen people, gri- I mean, not gripe, but I mean, honestly, not even be able to afford stuff. And it really bothered me because I'm like, you know, if they only knew my father, not, not Jason, my dad, he does take care of me. He help, he's helped me in stuff and through my life and still does this very day. But my father, God, if your father, your earthly father wants to do good for you, imagine what Jesus wants to do for you. He took upon all this stuff, all this, con- all this anything he ever faced. They spat upon him. They did all kinds. Of, he got beat unimaginably, the stuff he faced. For me and you, we can make it through every single day. And I mean, it's just, I'm the head, not the tail. I mean, I have to tell myself that sometimes. Like yesterday, I was quoting scripture in the truck. I'm the head, not the tail, above and not beneath, a lender and not a borrower. When you're, when you're spending 300 something dollars in tires, you need, you need to be sp- speaking this stuff of your life. I'm a lender, not a borrower. I'm a lender, I'm a, not a, yeah, I'm a lender and not a borrower. I don't borrow money. Thank God my stuff's paid for. Speak that every single time when you pay your house payment, when you pay your bills. Thank God I'm a lender on a bar. I'm a blessing to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I am called to help people. I'm called. That's what God's called us. I mean, called every Christian to do. You're supposed to be a witness and testimony. I tell the youth all the time, man, we're a light in this dying world. I mean, you see the youth of this. I don't know if you've seen the revival going on. These kids getting about the thousands and getting baptized from like 20 on down. At our, even, even like at our church this past Sunday, yeah, it was the youth. Almost all the youth went down there and got baptized. They're getting washed by, his, by the water. I mean, that's, it's a resembling bringing stuff back by being washed by the blood. Your sins are gone forever, but you have to keep renewing your mind by the word of God so you don't keep doing stuff, and he'll break stuff you deal with. But it's just amazing to me that you can be a light in the world, but if you don't, you can be a dull light. I've had a little mag light. I've had a little light before, one of the yellow lights. Do you remember? Anybody know what the yellow, little, little, yellow lights I'm talking about? They're probably about that long, and you shine it, and you can barely see the core out there. But I've all, you don't want to be that type of light. That's when you're not studying like you should. You know some scriptures, but not enough. But it, you can have, I got another light that I take hunting. And it's got, it's a big long mag light, and it's got several D batteries in it. It's a big one. And you take that thing, and you hit it, and I can shine. I can probably blind them people out the road. But you can take it and pull the lens back, and it even opens up bigger. 
But if you're studying to show yourself approved, you can either be that light or the big mag light. I want to be the big mag light to be like, hey, man, what is that? Why are you doing Why are you doing so good? Let me tell you about my father. That's why I'm doing so good. He takes care of me. He can take care of you. But you got to come and get into his house. Go to, Come to his house. He's calling us just like the prodigal son. He was, he was standing there. I see that every single day for me. I'm like, man, Jesus, just like it's an example, of course, the father was standing there. The son had his head down. What I've done, I've done this, I've done wrong. And the father's standing there with his arms open wide. Come home, come home. He's constantly calling us, come home, come home. And he's, he's just, that's all he's doing is calling the lost home because every day I see that goes by and by, the rapture's coming, God's coming back. We need to get every soul we possibly can lost because like Miss Jean was saying today, yeah, we, we, you see people working all the time, all this kind of stuff. Everything we're doing is for houses, cars. I mean, God wants us to be blessed to get the message out, to get the word of God out. Cars and stuff, that just rusts away. That don't, in thousands of years, none of this stuff will even matter. Even the building we're in right now, we're using it as a purpose, of course, to reach the lost. But that stuff doesn't matter. We're, we need to be focused on eternal things for, for every day. That's our focus is what I can do to better the kingdom of God every single day. That's what your first thought should be when you get up. Now, mine is, is like sometimes, not all the time, I need to focus on that more. But there's some I'm like, man, I do not want to go to work today. It's going to be hot. That's usually what I think. But that's what we need to focus on is building the kingdom of God. <clears throat> if you stay mad, and I've noticed this in my very own life, not this, not the next. If you stay mad, you give place to the enemy. If you stay mad, you give place to the enemy. Just like for an example, man, when they, when they stole myself that time, I thought about getting them people. I thought about it all the time. I was on panic. I was, I mean, honestly, I was, if I heard a little noise outside, I was going outside. I'm like, man, I ain't taking no more of my stuff. I've worked hard for this stuff. I mean, I was always, the devil had me in fear that they were going to come and steal more stuff. He had me in fear because I was not focused on the word of God saying, you know, if I'm, I could have been trusting God and God could have just brought me brand new things with, from somebody to get out of the Kubota place, come bring me new lawnmowers or whatever. He could have, but I, didn't, I wasn't focusing on that. I wasn't focusing on what God could do for me. I was more concerned about the fear of those people coming back. You're, I mean, the, if you give place to the enemy, he will, he don't just, you won't just crack the door and he's like, oh, I'm going to just creep in here. No, he's like, boom, I'm coming in. He's going to kick the door down and everything. He's going to come right in if you let him. We have to take our place. But like I said, if you stay mad, you can get sick that way. A lot of people die prematurely because they're mad and they hate people. I know Dad, he talked about it one time. I knew the man as well. He hated somebody in the church, not here. He hated somebody in the church, and he would not let it go. And he, he remember, I remember the story from Dad telling it, and I do know the man. But anyways, he hated somebody, and he, he's, I don't know if he passed away or not, but he, is crip, he was crippled for a long time, couldn't hardly do anything. And he, he would not forgive that person, and he could not get healed. If you're holding unforgiveness and you're sick with something, you can't get healed because you're, shut, you're shutting it off. You're shutting the flow of God off. If you, hate some, if you hate somebody, it's really hard for me to believe you're a Christian if you hate somebody. There are some people that I don't, might not get, I usually get along with most people, but if they don't believe exactly like we do or something like that or try to cause division or whatever, I'm just like, you know what, I love you, buddy, have a good life, I'll see you in heaven, or pray I do. But, <laughs> but for real, though, I don't, I don't attack those people. It doesn't serve me any, play, any good to attack somebody at all. Just keep focusing on what God's called you to do and keep on moving on. But, <clears throat> that, that, and honestly, that's, how be, that's being angry all the time. This is how you have... This is how you become the person no one wants to be around. And Morgan's told me before, hey, you need to calm down. You need to chill out. When people start to pick up on you being mad a little bit because when they came and stole my stuff, I was bringing that into my life, anger. And I would be focused. I would be mad all the time. Like, man, I'm working all the time to pay this stuff that I already had paid for. They're still my stuff. And I, I let it get, I let it weigh on me. I let it feed. Like I said, if you don't feed something, it won't grow. If I'd have been like, you know what? God bless them with that lawnmower. God help them. Forgive, forgive them for they know not what they do. I ask you to let, let it go in my heart. Help me let it go, Lord. Just not ever, never think about it again. And just let peace come back into my life. But I chose not to. And for that period of time, not only did they steal my stuff, but because I was mad the whole time, my truck caught on fire. I had several other things that happened because I was not letting stuff go. I held on to it, and, you know, and I let it go. When I let it go, peace came in. I mean, I, we were struggling a little bit financially. When I let it go, I was shutting the windows of heaven off in my life. And I didn't even realize it. I was shutting God off. I was tithing and giving, be like, man, I'm tithing and giving. I'm doing my part. Why ain't God blessing me? And I knew why. But I, would, I mean, most of us know why we're not, things are not working out in our life 90% of the time. I was like, why am I not getting blessed? And I was like, and I was sitting there listening to Dad and Pastor talking. I was like, it's because you hate those people. Until you let that go, 
you're not going to get blessed. God's not, the windows of heaven are not going to open up. Things are not going to start doing good. And one day I was riding down the road, and I was like, you know what? As I turned around, and I, I thought I saw my lawnmower, which there's millions of them out there, it seems like. I turned around, and I was just looking at this lawnmower, like, man, that's not my lawnmower. And I, I was getting on the road, I was like, I can't believe I just wasted 10 minutes turning around, looking at this lawnmower, calling the cops, all kinds of dumb stuff. I wasted half, throughout a half an hour. And I remember saying to myself, God, let, I'll forgive them. Help me out. I've, I've been living wrong. I haven't been doing right. Repent. Repentance. The Bible still believes in repentance. You should still, if you do wrong, repent. That's the quickest way to get back right with God. Well, be right standing with God. If I say something wrong to anybody and I don't know it, please come to me. I want to make it right. If I say something and I do know what the people, even people, them guys I work with, I'll be like, hey, man, I should not have said that. We'll be tree guys. We're rough and tough. I mean, they had rough and tough and all that kind of stuff, throwing trees around. You, I mean, you the big dog out there. And I'm the biggest one, so I'm like, when I say something wrong, I snap at him. I'm like, look, man, I should not have said that. Please forgive me. He's like, man, that means a lot because most of the people would have never even thought about saying that, saying that, just move on throughout the day. Be a Christian. That's what we're supposed to be is be like. A Christian means to be Christ-like. <clears throat> they say, oh, Lord, here comes Mr. Grumpy on your job. You don't want to be that person, Mr. and Mrs. Grumpy. Like, oh, I see them coming. Let's change the subject because we were talking about, man, you remember what he said last time he was here? You don't want to be that person. That they don't, people don't want to be around. You want to be a light. You can be somebody who brings darkness as well. But you can mess up relationships, marriages, get fired from your job. If you constantly or have a bad attitude on your job because you're not walking in love and holding on to stuff, you can lose your job. No one wants to hear you complain all the time. People have done this for so many years, it's impossible for them to think. I mean, I've, I've, like I said, I've known people that do this for so many years. It's impossible for them to think of any other way to live because they complain and they're complainers. You can change the complaining. I mean, that's, that's easy to do. Man, thank God I had a good day today. Thank God them tires didn't blow out. Thank God I got a wife that loves me. Thank God I got a house I can come home to. Thank God I got a family that loves me. Thank God I got a church family that loves me. Thank God I got a good job. You can thank God. I mean, you can just start naming stuff off over and over again uh, if you want to. I mean, just like that. I mean, I wasn't even thinking about it, and it happened. But you can thank God for stuff. Because he's done so much for us. Just thank God for Jesus. If you've got nothing else to be thankful for, you can thank God for Jesus. A lot of Christians have allowed politics to become their religion. That's why they think and talk and not realize what, why they have, that's why they have not realized and why they've lost their joy and peace. If you're thinking about, man, this is going wrong in the world, this and this, I don't care what the world does. The world's of the devil. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. This is the devil's home. He has free reign here. He can't do but so much because we're here. When we leave, when the rapture comes back and we leave and all go to heaven, then he can do whatever he wants to because peace out, I ain't going to be here. But I'm just being honest with you. The Christians are not going to be here and they're going to realize, man, we were really helping out. We were really putting the devil down because of the way we live because we're Christ. He can't do so much in the world because of Christ is here in us. Christ is in every single one of us. But, and crit, and a lot, like I said, they're mad all the time. As Christians, it's actually a bad witness if you stay mad. When I was living like that and complaining about that stuff, you know, it even comes back to my memory today, right now. You know, them guys I was working working with, you know, they, they heard me talk about, man, I want to get them people. If them people came back in my yard, I like to beat them down, all this kind of stuff. I'm like, and I sit back here and think about it. At that time, I'm like, man, you know how dumb that really was? Those guys could have been on the verge of getting saved. Now you have to work even harder to get them back right. But I let them know, hey, look, I shouldn't have held that against those people. I need to walk in love and forgiveness. And when you have peace, how many of you like peace? Anybody like peace? I like peace. I like to have peace with people. I like to be joyful. I like to be happy. Just like when those tires blew out. I didn't, you didn't hear me say anything when they almost blew out. They didn't, thank God. But like when the stuff messed up yesterday, I didn't say anything. You can choose not to say anything. I control my mouth. You can control what you say. It's up to you. We can't expect much better out of people in the world. But if we as Christians can't forgive each other and let or let go, of anger we have stored up. If we as Christians can't forgive each other or let go of anger that we have stored up, we need to be a light. We need, like I said earlier, to the lost, a help to the hurting. I mean, just like you see people all the time, people are hurting in this world. They're looking for answers. We have the answer. His name is Jesus Christ. I mean, we have, we have it. You can't help anyone if you are mad about things not going your way. That's selfishness. If you're focusing on, man, this didn't go right in my life, this, that, and this, all this stuff, I had a few things that happened, this, like I said, this past week. You don't focus on that. That's not what you need to focus on. Get it right. Get it fixed. Keep moving forward. Just trust God. Now, if it's with people, make it right. You can't make somebody forgive you if you 
said something out of the way, you can't make them, but do your part and say, hey, look, man, I was wrong. Please forgive me. I've done it to Chris, Alex. I've done it to them guys, and they've done it to me. We've, we're buddies. Jonathan has done it to me. If we've done something wrong to each other, we'll call each other. Hey, man, I shouldn't have said. I shouldn't have been at him. I've done it. They've done it. That's what you call trying to be a Christian and try to make stuff right. You can't help anyone if you're mad about things not going your way. They, they want to see something different about us. They're looking to see if any, why are you a Christian? Why are you a Christian? Because I have the answer. Yeah, I'm going to face problems like you do, but I know Jesus is going to see me through every single time. What can they see? They can see the peace of God that passes all understanding. They can see the joy that is your strength. And instead of hate, they can see love and kindness. If you want to be different, God, get it in God's word and renew your mind. Washing your filthy, tr washing that filthy trash in the world. What, I mean, if you ever get on Facebook or anything, you're going to see stuff all the time. If you get on your phone, it ain't always good stuff. 90%. It's like, it's like, this happened to me today. Please be praying for me. All this kind of stuff. Usually these people are not even Christian. <laughs> so, you know, just being honest with you, that's what it feels like. I'm like, man, you have all these bad stuff happening to you. When are you going to get out of the valley? Come on, trust God. You got to trust God for yourself sometimes. But you see all this stuff happening. If you renew your mind, keep washing, washing that filthy trash the world offers out of you, bringing out of living waters. I mean, you can have living waters inside of you every single day. When I start having, a, if something starts attacking me, sickness, whatever, I just start praying in the Holy Ghost. I just start letting it roll. And as soon as my headache, if I usually headaches were what used to attack me bad, and I used to, have to take Excedrin and all kinds of stuff, and the devil would be like so much pressure on my head, I would actually throw up and stuff like that. And I would be praying. I learned that as soon as I get a headache, I just start praying in the Holy Ghost. I don't stop until it's gone. And when I start praying in the Holy Ghost, it'll leave. It has to leave because the devil's like, I know he's not going to shut up until he until that headache leaves. So he, it usually just goes away. It goes away within minutes if I start praying in the Holy Ghost. And I'll just keep praying and just, hey, look, I got you, bro. Just let him know. You're not going to attack. You're trespassing on God's property. The Bible says in Romans 12, 2, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. By changing the way you think. You, you can change the way you think. I mean, it just said that right there. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Which is God's will for us is to be good and pleasing and perfect. I know in my Bible case, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you to prosper you and to harm you, not to harm you. That's his plans for us. It's to prosper us. He's got plans for us. The devil has plans for us. And a lot of times your flesh has plans for you. Your flesh will have stuff that you want to do, not even the devil. Your flesh will have stuff. Man, I want to do this type of job. And God's called you to be, you know, taking care of little kids or whatever for the rest of your life. Or be a stay-at-home mom. I mean, be a pastor. Whatever he's called you to do. And the world will want you to be like, no, that's, that's a good-paying job. Chase that. I always tell the youth all the time, pray in the Holy Ghost. Figure out what God has called you to do and go after it with all your heart. Whether, I mean, I've had family and stuff say, hey, man, I don't think you should be going to LTU and all this kind of stuff. Why don't you do this? I'm not anybody in here. I've had people say that to me before, and I'll be like, man, I know what I'm supposed to do. God's called me to do this, and I'm going to go after it. Just go after it with all, all your heart. That's all you can do. <clears throat> Matthew 5, chapter 5, verses 43 through 44 in the NLT. You have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I, this is what the Lord says, but I say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those. If you want peace, I can go and tell you right now, when I hated those people that stole my stuff, I was not happy. I did not have peace. I did not have joy. But when I started praying for them, everything came back the way it was. I had my peace. I had my joy restored. They can take all my stuff. I'd rather have all my stuff gone than not have joy. I'd rather have joy above all else because, man, without joy, you have nothing. Without Jesus, you have nothing. Living a miserable life is not what I want. I want my life to be pleasing and perfect unto the Lord. And do my best anyway. Can you love your enemies? Jesus said, you can. It's not a feeling. It's a choice. It's a choice. You can choose. That doesn't mean you have to like what they say and do, but you should genuinely care about whether they are lost and on their way to hell or not. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Do good to them that hate you. It is pos it is, it's possible. The Bible says you can. Do good to them that hate you. If somebody, somebody, you know somebody hates you, be nice as you can to them, people. Be like, hey, man, I love you. You're my brother. I'm praying for you. Just help them out the best you can. 
Don't go around, man. Hey, man, you can take this outside. Don't do that kind of stuff because that, that destroys your witness. Whether you believe it or not, whether you're out there cutting grass, putting in tile, doing whatever you do, yeah, that's, that might be what you're doing for now, but it, take it serious because there's going to be somebody watching you. I know Brother Carlos will talk behind the drums sometimes. He'll be like, man, I, I was at his job this time, this, this past week, and I had a chance to witness these, these people. He's putting in tile. We all have a chance to witness to somebody. Every second matters. You can choose. I mean, if he'd go in there and rant and raving, I know Carlos will never do that, but he'd go in there ranting and raving, throwing his tools around, saying, man, I don't even want to be doing this job. Those people are not going to ask him, who's your God? He goes around full of joy. Man, I'm excited to be here. How are you doing? Do you know Jesus? Tell him, and he tells them that. that. That means a lot to people. They want to see, they want to see why you serve God. You've got to be built up with joy. If you're not built up with joy and you're miserable all the time, I don't want to serve your God. That's just, I'll be honest with you. If you're miserable all the time, you'd be like, man, I have the worst life ever. I'd be like, I'll stay away from him because he's kind of scary. But can you love your enemies? Jesus said you can. It's Like I said, it's not a feeling. Do good to them that hate you. It's possible because the Bible said so. <clears throat> Let me mark my stuff. That's why I brought that pen up here. Worrying about tomorrow steals your joy. Just like Brother Chris, that's why that meant so much to me when he used that scripture. Worrying about tomorrow steals your joy. We should pray about the fu- our future that no matter what we face, God will see us through. God will see you through no matter what you face. And we will be even better on the other side of it. No matter what you face, just trust God. But you've you got to be trusting God. If you're not trusting God, it's, it can get worse if you're not trusting the Lord. And I've, I've, like I said, I've learned. There's some stuff I've learned from experience. I might be 26 years old, but I have learned some stuff. If you're not trusting God, things can get worse. Don't be saying, it can't get much worse than this. Like Dad always says when I'll be preaching, you hear the dump trucks backing up, and it, do, it does get worse. So you have to trust God to help you get out of that pit. And he can get you out. He's the only one who can. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace, his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So if you're living in Christ Jesus, his peace will guard your heart and mind. So that means to tell me, if I want peace, i got to get close to Christ. The only way you can get close to him is by knowing him. That's getting in his handbook for everyday life. That's getting in the Bible. That's how you know Jesus. <clears throat> so if you don't have peace, you can't guard your heart and mind from the devil's tricks and traps to throw you off course. The devil, like I said earlier, he wants to throw you off course. If you have if you have the word of God inside of you, he can't just come up to you and blow your house down. It's like a brick. You're going to build your house on a rock when you're studying on God's word. But if you don't know anything and you're on the sand, it's nothing for you to get washed out and thrown in the sea. But if you're on a strong foundation, God's got you. But you've got to be on the strong foundation. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. <clears throat> and all of my scriptures will be in the NLT. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Right there, that means a lot to me. God cares about me. He cares about Jay. He cares about everybody in here. He cares about the dying and lost. But he also cares about the people that are going to hell and that are in hell right now. He cares about them, but you have a choice to make. You have to call on him, and he'll help you. God cares about what you are facing. If you ask him, he will show you the way out of your troubles. I mean, that means a lot to me. He'll just show you a way out. I mean, I've, I've been in situations in my life. God will be like, hey, look, if you do this right here, you'll be okay. Just do this right here. And, I, and I've done it. And I've been like, man, this does not make any sense. But a lot of times what he tells you is not going to make sense to your natural mind. You just do it because in the end, it turns out better every single time. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you his peace at all times. And in every situation, the Lord be with you all. I mean, he's the God of peace. Whatever you are going through, he can, you can have peace in your life, whether you're fa- whatever you're facing. You could be facing anything. Sickness, this, they say, is terminal. You got peace and joy, joy can kick that out of here. I mean, Jesus took that on his back. He's 1 Peter 2.24, that by his stripes we are healed. If you got joy and you believe that with all your heart, just like you believe I'm standing here, you can pinch yourself, you believe yourself standing here just like you do. 1 Peter 2.24, you can be healed, but you got to have joy in it. Don't be walking around, man, I'm healed. Thank God I'm healed. And you're walking around grumpy, sad, and upset. I mean, thank God I'm healed. I mean, thank God I'm healed. Be praising God in the storm. Praise him. <clears throat> Psalms 4, chapter 4, verse 8 in the NLT. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. 
for you alone, O oh Lord, will keep me safe. I mean, for peace, he's going to keep us safe. No matter what they say, on what you, which, which, like I said earlier, I don't watch the news. No matter what people are saying, this is going to happen. This, all this is going to happen. It ain't going to happen to me. I'm a Christian. My God is a God of peace. Me is me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. God's going to protect us to the day I leave here. Whether the rapture comes, I'm going to be protected and safe no matter what. I know God's got us. You're a Christian, right? Right. That was kind of not quite loud. You're a Christian, right? <laughs> right. Right, you are. So God, you got peace in your life, right? If not, just study these scriptures and it'll help you out because that's what I did. I studied them and it helps me out a lot every single day because I still need to work on my peace and joy. That might be why I talk about it so much. Romans chapter 8, verse 6 in the NLT. So letting your sinful nature control your minds leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to a life of pe- life and peace. Letting your sinful nature control your mind. I mean, just like I said, you get on Facebook and stuff, there's going to be stuff on there, I mean, whatever, not, fa- not just Facebook, all kinds of stuff, anything just about you see on your phone. It can be used for good, it can be used for evil. A lot of times it's a tool for the devil, and he can use it for evil, but um, you can spread the gospel with it as well. But, I mean, there's stuff that pops up. If you click, start clicking, I've told, like I'll tell the youth, if you start clicking on stuff, more and more is going to show up. You can dig yourself in a pit real quick. <laughs> you don't even realize what happened. But that, like I said, don't let your flesh control you. You can control yourself. It's very easy to do. Once you know how to do it, like, no, I'm not doing that. Turn it off. Put it away. No, I don't have to eat that triple bacon cheeseburger today. Put it away. Just get a little single. You can do that every now and then. But I don't know. I like to eat. But I'm being honest. But your sinful nature is always going to want to rise up. Your flesh is always going to want to rise up and say, hey, man, you can do this. It's, it's going to feel good. It's going to be fun. You're going to be, you're going to be Mr. Cool. The devil's going to tell you that until they're like, hey, man, put your hands behind your back. <laughs> That's not what you want. That's what the devil does. But, hey, all your friends are watching this. Like I tell him, I saw with Tyler about this, me and Tyler, because Tyler is pretty tough. Don't mess with Tyler. Tyler can fight pretty good. <laughs> Tyler's my buddy. He knows he's my buddy. But what I'm saying is you don't want to be the, you, listen, don't yield to your flesh. If somebody comes at you, just like that guy I told you all that time, he came at me that, after church one Sunday and said something to me out of the way. I just gripped my teeth. I didn't say anything. Sometimes it's best not to say nothing at all. Because what my flesh, I picture myself, boom, I picture myself just coming out of the blue, just knocking this guy out. But that's not the right thing to do because, like I said, put your hands behind your back, Mr. Wallace. You're not going to be able to teach the youth tonight. That's not what you want to hear. That would be pretty rough. That would be pretty rough. Hey, Dad, I can't teach you tonight. If you mind filling in or get somebody to fill in because I'm in jail. I need, by the way, when you get done teaching, you're going to bail me out. But what I'm saying is you can, you can control that. I, I controlled myself that day. I didn't say anything. I did get in the car and kind of lose my cool for a second. And Morgan's like, what happened? I'm like, I'm going to beat that guy up. I should have just punched that guy. I was like, I shouldn't. But he didn't say anything to my wife or anything. So if he said something to my family, and I would have been, you know, we'd be in the parking lot. But <laughs> I'm, not that, I'm not that far ahead. I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. You should be too. I'm still working on it. I could take a, I could take a few things, but if you say something to my wife, what would you say? I'm, I wouldn't even say what you say. I'd just turn around and start throwing hands. We'd be going down. But I'm <laughs> just being honest. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. Don't, I try to leave everybody alone. I like peace, but don't come barking at me. Don't be, don't be messing with me. I try, to, I try to stay calm. I ain't never looking for trouble. You, that's what I think my boss actually told my dad that Sunday. Big J, he ain't never looking for trouble. He's always, his dad said, yeah, he's never looking for trouble. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not looking for trouble, but please don't cause it. <laughs> don't cause it. But James chapter 1, verse 2, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it a great opportunity for joy. I have to work on that. Like I said, I wasn't in joy mode when that guy cussed me that day. I wasn't in saying, praise God, thank you for this opportunity. I was like, I wasn't saying that. I was like, praise God, you just got to thank God I'm a Christian because I would have got you. No, I didn't say that, but I was, I was, I was pretty mad. But you have to, I have to work on that. Like I said, that's been a little bit ago. I have to work on it. And so if you don't, good for you. That's great. But I do. So like I said, I'm preaching to myself. In First, first Thessalonians, no, I'm, I went ahead of myself. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 in NLT. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Always be full of joy. Just be full of joy. You can choose to be full of joy. By the stuff you listen to, what you're feeding on throughout the day, when you're by yourself, what kind of music are you listening to? That stuff can bring you down, and it can bring you up. What are you feeding on? I was talking to Miss um, Pat today. I was cutting her off for, I was like, so a lot of times I was just, like, what you list? She asked me what I was listening to. 
I'm like, I'm actually, she's like, man, you're moving pretty quick. You must be listening to some upbeat music. I'm like, no, I'm actually listening to Keith Moore. So I just told her, I mean, I listen to sermons all day long. I listen to stuff all the time that'll build you up, feed you, and help you grow and get closer to God because I want to know him more, and you should too. <clears throat> Psalms chapter 118, verses 24. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Just like when I was, saw that sign. This is a, it didn't say this is the day the Lord has made. It said this is going to be a good day. But I just kind of, when I, what I saw was this is the day the Lord has made in my mind. I will rejoice and be glad in it. God will see you through no matter what you face for that day. He'll give you the strength to make it through the day. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 through 9 in the NLT. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while, it doesn't say you're going to live in them. You must endure them for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so, <clears throat> so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the new world. You love him even though you've never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you must, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy, inexpressible joy. The reward of for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. I mean, thank God, just trusting God and being in peace and joy. If you got nothing to thank God for, thank God when I, when I finish my course, finish my life, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to be with Jesus. I know I'm going to be with Jesus on the other side. No matter what the world may face, at the end of the day, I'm a Christian. I'm going to be on the streets of gold when I go to heaven. God's going to take care of his own, and I'm going to take as many people as I can with me. But that's, you gotta, that requires you being built up with joy and peace. And these last days, when the devil unleashes all he's got to bring, um, pretty much unleash hell on the earth to try to bring people down, he tries to bring oppression on you. Joy is the opposite of oppression. I know a lot of times the devil will weigh me down. I, I mean, we'll have these Holy Ghost service. People are like, why do you take off running? Because what you don't know is before that service, a lot of times they are, and I feel like they are for me, I know they're for other people as well, but a lot of times I've been so weighed down, I can actually feel when I get when I get hands laid on me or whatever even gets close to me sometimes, I can just feel it just like roll off my, it feels like a pickup truck just about rolls off my back. I'm like, thank God, God's got it. He's going to take care of it. Just give it to him. If you're facing problems, like I said, you can have joy because you're like, man, them blown out tires. God help me out. Here you go. And God helps you out. I mean, it doesn't matter what you're facing. You say, man, I can't hardly pay my bills. I'm tithing and giving. Uh, if you're tithing and giving, you have, that's the first qualification. God, help me out, and he'll help you out. He's always there. Just give it to him. If you don't give him something to work with, if you don't give him your problems and you're holding on to your problems all the time, oh, God, help me, God, help me. He's sitting there saying, give it to me, and I can help you. But you've got to give it to him first. Let it go. You've got to let it go. <clears throat> the Bible doesn't say we won't face things in this life. It actually says we won't endure many tri trials. But the trials will show that your faith is real. If your faith is real in God, no matter what you face, it'll show that your faith is real. Because if you're staying, you're going through problems in your life, no matter what you face, you're like, man, you know what? I know God's got it. God's got my back. He's going to take care of me. And a lot of times people say, Jesus is my co-pilot. I'm like, bro, just, Jesus, please just drive. Drive. I'm going to be in the back seat. I'll be in my little, high, my little car seat. I'll be like, hey, I'm around with Jesus. But for real, let him, let him lead you and guide you. He's your father. Trust him because he knows what's best for you. Like if he says, hey, like I told you about this, be led by your spirit, be spirit led. I talked about that one time. If you're at the red, if you're at the red light, a green light, and it turns green, you're sitting there, and you hear something say, sit here for a second, three seconds. You just count to three. By the time you count to three, a Mack truck rolls by. You're like, man, I'm sure glad he told me to count to three because that too, I would have been gone. But for real, I mean, God has really helped me out. I know I've sat at a red light down there before, and I had that happen. Be quick to listen to the Holy Spirit and not quick to smart off because, I mean, if you say something, I know. I have to watch my mouth. I am quiet most of the time, but if I, if I start dealing with stuff, I know my personality. If I start facing stuff, the devil, he tries to come at you. Come at you. He wants you to say negative stuff because if you feed something, it's going to get worse. And I found that out the hard way. Just say, hey, when the, when the devil says, man, you, don't have to, you ain't going to be able to pay your bills this much. And when you come back at him and say, I'm a lender, not a borrower, he don't really know what to do because you've been feeding on the word because he's like, man, last time you said, I don't really know what I'm going to do. This time you're saying, I'm a lender, not a borrower. That means you can pay your bills. That means you can help other people. 
That means you can be a blessing to the ministry because you hear people all the time talk about, I'm, I'm poor, I was, I'm a, I was born poor, and I'm going to die poor. I'm like, no, I was born rich, I'm going to die rich. Thank God, because I'm a child of God. If I'm a child of God, I was born rich, I'm going to die rich. I'm going to be rich the whole way through, no matter what I face. God's going to take care of me. It ain't about money and things, but I can be a blessing to other people, help other people. People say, well, it don't matter if the church has money or not. If you ain't got money to give somebody, if you can't give out free CDs in your church and help, that's a, that's a way God can get the message out to other people. If you can give out free CDs, I give stuff out to people all the time. They're like, man, how much did I charge? That? No, the church has it for free because we're blessed to be a blessing. That's what RLC is. We're blessed to be a blessing. Everybody that comes to church here, God's got us. You can take care of yourself and you can take care of others in the world. You don't have to depend on the government or other things. God's got you. You're a lender, not a borrower. Like I said, the Bible says you won't, won't face things. You will face, you'll face many things in this life. As you remain strong through many trials, as you remain strong through them, it will give God praise and honor. When people are watching you, like I said earlier, if somebody's watching you, man, those guys like I work with, they might, they might just be good old boys, tree guys. They're seeing what, I mean, to me anyways, they have asked me that before. I know they are. They're looking at me saying, you know, you don't really blow up and get mad when I really am thinking I want to blow up and get mad, but you don't blow up and get mad because I was controlling myself. Like I said, you can control your temper. You can control your mind. You're like, I got the peace of God here in my heart. I've, I heard, listened to a song one time. I was trying to get it across to Aunt Jennifer today, but I was like, you know what? That's a Keith Moore song. That's probably made up, which is good. <laughs> it's still good, but I was, I was sitting there thinking. I was like, Aunt Jennifer ain't going to get that because it's made up. But anyways, it's like the peace of God reigned in my heart. You know, no matter what, I got joy, joy, joy. He just, he just went on and on. And I was sitting there, I was just sort of praising God. And I was like, you know what? I got joy in my heart. I got joy in my heart because Jesus lives inside of me. When, this, when stuff's happening, thank God I got joy in my heart. I got peace. And they're like, man, you didn't get mad. Why didn't I get mad? Because Jesus lives inside of me. And that they want to know that Jesus. But you can make it through it by having the peace of God and joy of God. But the only way to do this is by meditating on his word daily. If you're not in the word, you can forget this whole thing I even talked about tonight, any message that's ever preached. If you're not taking the time to study to show yourself approved, that's great to come to church. I'm not saying that. I believe in coming to church. You're supposed to come to church. The Bible even says, don't for, forget the gathering of the saints. Don't forsake it. You're supposed to come to church. That's the only time you hear God's word. That ain't enough. You need to be meditating on it day and night. I know for me, I try to listen to it any chance I get. I'll put it in my headphones while I'm at work, listen to it, study my Bible. Study and pray. Be built up. That way when time comes and the devil tries to steal your peace and joy, you got some word to fight back with. You got the sword of the spirit. You got you got everything. You got but I mean, just trust God and you can have peace and joy in your life. I pray y'all got something out of that. If you don't mind, somebody play the piano or something, the guitar or something for me. And this one is right there. <clears throat> and you guys can stand to your feet, if you will. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if anybody in here has not made the Lord Jesus Christ their own personal Lord and Savior of their life, you can come down here now. If you can raise your hand and come out here now if you want to. I believe I know most of you. I believe you guys are saved. But if you have any special need or prayer requests, you can come down now and we'll be glad to pray with you. Anybody else?
guys are dismissed. Y'all have a great night.